There's some people making videos about me, which is awesome. Thank you so much for what you're doing. I really appreciate it. Opportunities, when people in a group see that you're down for the cause and they find out about you and what you're doing, opportunities come out of the woodwork. So thank you for the people who are making videos about my videos. It's helping me quite a bit actually, like in ways you couldn't even imagine. So thanks for that. What I'd love to know from you is in the comments, uh, or actually not on the comments because I had to turn those off because of trolls. <laughs> All right, everyone, you asked for more. The man, the myth, the legend. Grant Cardone's most enthusiastic Scientology recruit. YouTube's cringiest Scientology promoter. And Pasco County's most famous Scientologist. The one, the only, Tampa Brad. Oh, anyway, these aren't the only cute little references that he uh, he makes to me in his recent videos. And I am actually gonna do a reaction to a specific one of his videos in this video. It's a 13 minute video, here's the thing. We're not gonna watch this whole video. It's actually quite boring, but there are some parts of it uh, that are actually really worth responding to and actually are, and are valuable in their own right because it gives you a glimpse into how Scientologists think about things and how they like to stratify people almost, almost into buckets of like worthy of existing and not worthy of existing. And I'm exaggerating a bit, but I will go on record and say that the only reason Scientologists are not against some form of genocide is not because it is immoral, but only because it is illegal. If it were actually legal to just wipe out certain segments of the population, Scientologists would be in favor of that. And Brad actually touches on a part of Scientology that speaks specifically to that. So let's check out this video. He did a video called, I Joined Scientology and I Found a Similarity to Levels of Energy by Fred Dodson. Now, right off the bat, we have a pretty major Scientology violation here, a violation of the Scientology rules. And I think this has to do with why Brad has stopped uploading to YouTube the past several weeks. It is totally unacceptable in Scientology to give any sort of credence or promotion to something Scientology would call an offbeat practice or some sort of squirrely, uh, squirrel is a Scientology word, a squirrely version of Scientology, an offbeat of Scientology, whether it specifically comes from Scientology or not. Anything that deals with the mind or mental health or spirituality, um, even some like alternative medicine stuff is like completely verboten for Scientologists. You're not allowed to be involved in it. You're not allowed to promote it. And even though it, in this video, Brad, you know, his intention is to promote Scientology. He's promoting Scientology by saying how similar it is to another book he thinks is great. So Brad, you're already in trouble for this video. I'm surprised you still got it up. We're gonna take a look at parts of this and we're gonna give some commentary on it. Okay, over to Brad. Video, I want to talk to you about the Scientology principle that has to do with uh, if you know about what vibration or levels of energy are. I wanna to talk to you about what that actually is, where it came from <clears throat> in the writings that predate anything including uh, Frederick Dodson's Levels of Energy, which I actually have a review on on my channel. I think that that is a really good book, but I wanna show you something that shows something very, very identically similar, basically, uh, that came before Fred Dodson, maybe even before, probably not before he was alive necessarily, but predates that, predates any book talking about levels of energy or levels of vibration. So he already admits he loves the book. He's got a video review of the book on the channel. He's saying Scientology came before it, which to anyone in Scientology implies that Fred Dodson ripped it off. Anyway, this is not good. This is not good. And uh, it's the work of L. Ron Hubbard on the tone scale. That's what it's called in Scientology. The tone scale is basically different levels that a person can be at. You can be at a different tone going from zero. There's also a, a tone scale below zero. It goes from zero to 40.0. And uh, the book that covers this in depth is called Science of Survival. Amazing, amazing, amazing book. Uh, it's a book that um, really helps with evaluating people. So there's a course that uses a lot of the technology of this book, and it's I believe it's called Knowing Who You Can Trust. Is that the name of the life improvement course, babe? Knowing Who You Can Trust. Yeah. Knowing Who You Can Trust with the white hat and the black hat, and then also... Um, By the way, I don't want to you know uh, assign too much importance to the significance of simple words, but he says white hat and black hat. 
Scientology really does invoke very basic, simplistic, black and white, us versus them mentality. And black hat and white hat, black hats, white hats, is absolutely, those are like real official Scientology terms that are used in Scientology policy. They're used by Scientology administrators. It's like good guy or bad guy. And you know, LRH likes to talk about these things in terms of tone level. And I don't want to dip, give a whole Scientology lesson, but essentially he draws a line at, on the tone scale at 2.0, which is antagonism. And he says, if you're above 2.0, uh, you're basically a good guy. And if you're below 2.0, you're basically a bad guy. And then there's another line of 1.1, which is covert hostility. That's where LRH puts all homosexuality. Anyone who is gay is considered a 1.1. And it is at that level below which L. Ron Hubbard said, the world would be a much better place if everyone below 1.1 could just be quietly disposed of without sorrow. And so anyway, he's gonna to touch on this a little more. I don't wanna make the video any longer than it has to be, but you know, he casually throws off the black hat, white hat. That's how Scientologists think. Uh, the one on building successful relationships with others also pulls a little bit of information from this book. But this book basically breaks down the tone scale. And if you've read the book, Levels of Energy by Fred Dodson, you will notice if you compare these two scales, right, his levels of energy versus L. Ron Hubbard's tone scale, the tone scale, A, came many years before the Levels of Energy book was written. Like, I think it predates it by like 20 or 30 years. It's kind of insane. And uh, it uses a lot of the same words to describe different levels, and they're in the same order. Most of the words are the same or very similar, and you'll notice that they're in the same order. Now, then why bother reading Science of Survival? <laughs> why bother read the book by a cult leader? Instead, just read the book Levels of Energy by Fred Dodson that Brad has already told you is a fantastic book and almost exactly identical. You're not doing yourself any favors here, Brad. Am I saying that Fred Dodson ripped off L. Ron Hubbard? No, I'm not. I have no evidence of that. I don't necessarily even think that that's the case. But one important thing that should be obvious to you is that different people coming to the same conclusion about a, a big thing that people tend to like, I don't know anything about that, that people tend to not look at it. But if multiple intelligent people come to the same conclusion about it, there's probably something there worth looking at. And so that's the conclusion <laughs> that I came to when I first read, uh, actually Dianetics talks about a tone scale as well, but he really expands on it in this book, Science of Survival. It's really good, it's, it's a thick book too. It's freaking huge. Um, but basically, I'll so I guess the message is when he read Fred Dodson's book, he already loved it and thought it was completely true. But what? Then he read Science of Survival and then he was like, oh, I only thought it was true before, but now I know it's true. Basically, I'll put the link in my bio for that book on, on Bridge Publications so you can buy it if you're interested. But the point is that if you are interested in knowing more about people, and knowing, see the, the cool thing about levels of energy is that it gives you an idea of, okay, people can be at different levels, right? People can be existing at different levels. And as you move up, it becomes more and more powerful for you to be at those different levels. Um, there's also a great book called Power Versus Force. Um, levels of Energy is by a different guy. Uh, He's not about to promote another non-LRH book about spirituality and energy, is he? Power Versus Force, I forget the name of the guy that wrote that, but also a really good book. I would, it's its definitely a, a good read, uh, but it talks about the same. Brad's in a lot of trouble. Thing, different levels of energy that you can be at, and as you go up, you gain more power, more ability, right? This talks to you about what you can expect, how you can spot where someone is right now, and you can even predict their behavior to a very specific fine point. So for example, if you take someone who is called, this is a very popular one, and, and if, if people know what this is and they're you know, antagonistic to the church, they're gonna hate that I use this example, which is why I'm gonna use it. Brad, I get the impression you might be talking to me there. It's called being 1.1. And uh, I wanna find the exact word here so I'm not misphrasing it, but. Okay, if you're a Scientologist and you're watching this video, Brad just proved to everyone that he's not even a really great Scientologist. Every Scientologist knows 1-1 one, one is, co is covert hostility. Like, I mean, it's like breathing air. 1.1 is what's called covert 
hostile. Uh, and a 1-1 one, one person has some very, very interesting characteristics. So I wanna go to uh, 155. One of the things that's, that uh, you can predict using someone's tone level, um, by, by the way, uh, covert hostile is someone who is like, they're actually hostile to you, but they won't show it, they're gonna hide it. So the ironic thing here is, he wants to imply that people like me, people who are against Scientology, you would say, are 1-1. One, one. And yet, by the very definition of 1-1, one, one, it couldn't be true because I'm not covertly hostile to Scientology. Um, if you want to call me hostile, you would have to admit and acknowledge that I am overtly hostile, not covertly. I also don't feel hostile to Scientology, so I'm not, I'm not sure the label would apply, but do you see what I'm saying here? It, 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 this black and white, good guy, bad guy thinking uh, is also combined with just a very childish, low level of thinking where he's not really able to see that these two things don't fit. Just because 1-1 one, one is bad, and just because being against Scientology is bad, doesn't mean being against Scientology is 1-1. One, one. His own materials should enable him to understand that these two things are not the same, and yet he can't see it. And it's not just him. It's very common for people to think that if you are a suppressive person, that that is 1-1. One, one. And yet, by their own definition, it's just absolutely not true. Truth. So this is how someone who's at the 1-1 one, one tone level would handle truth, right? So handling truth means you're given something that's true, right? Okay, what do you do with that? It's an interesting question on, on the face of it. Like you get something that's true, what do you do with it? So here's what the 1-1 one, one person would do. At 1-1, one, one, we would have a preference for artfully twisted facts, which hid a desire to destroy. Okay, so this is where in that childish, simplistic way of thinking, you can go on the chart of human evaluation, LRH said that at 1-1, one, one, you twist truth. And suppressive people twist truth because they're always taking the true information of Scientology and twisting it to make it seem really bad. And that's where, if you were actually thinking about things deeply, you would go, just because LRH gave that, said that that is how someone at 1-1 one, one handles truth, doesn't mean that in every case where you think truth is being twisted, that that's 1-1. One, one. Because you understand, he also said that covertly hostile means pretending to be friendly to something, but then covertly, you know, behind the scenes doing something bad. Do you see how I'm saying? He's not good at putting pieces together, but again, he's not unique. Scientologists do this all the time. Artfully twisted facts. Have you ever had someone like that where it's like, they're like not saying anything that's false. They're not lying, but they're just twisting things around in a way that's like, I feel like this, this is really going bad for me, but they seem to always be able to twist the words in a way that seems not bad. Even he is getting this wrong. Twisting a fact is lying. Twisting a fact is lying. Anyway, keep going. It's hiding the desire to destroy, right? So if you've experienced that, that can be a very, uh, you don't want to be around those people. I know I, I've had my fair share of people like that. Uh, and one's in this room. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. She's all. Awesome. It's funny because it's true. She's at 4.0 and above at all times or else. <laughs> I can see the headline or else. <laughs> can you imagine? Anyways. Can you imagine having to put up with this guy? Um, so one, one covert hostile. Keep that in mind. You know, look for people. Are there people you know who, you know, although they might not express it, they'll actually go to great lengths to hide it. They're actually hostile to you and your intentions. I want to give you another one for the one one tone level, because this is a very, very important one to start recognizing, because these are the people who, uh, you know, a two Brute, that's from uh, a play by Shakespeare. And it's where this dude Brutus basically stabs his best friend in the back as a part of a plot to kill him. I think it's from Julius Caesar. But anyways, that's a one one, right? A best friend who appears to be your best friend, but then stabs you in the back. That's a covert hostile. You know, it makes me wonder, I wonder where being dishonorably discharged from the military falls on the tone scale on, on Hubbard's chart of human evaluation. You know, Brad here, Brad here graduated from the West Point Military Academy. And soon thereafter, Brad was discharged from the military. So maybe the next time, dishonorably discharged. So maybe the next time Brad's in the org, he should ask them that question. You know, I'm, I'm sure LRH wouldn't have put it very high on the tone scale. At least L. Ron Hubbard was honorably discharged from the military.
be your best friend, but then stabs you in the back. That's a covert hostile 1.1 person. Now, we have another indicator here that's called courage level. And I'm, I'm literally just reading out of the book. This is just different chapters that talk about how people at different levels on the tone scale handle different things, what they do. Right, so here's another one. At 1-1, one, one, we, have, we have reached fear on the tone scale, which means that the, right, so like the person has gone, just so that you know, uh, one five, I believe is actually fear. Is that right? No, 1.0 is fear. I'm 1.5 is anger. I'm looking at the front for the Any good Scientologist would know that. Oh, it's in the back. Yeah, I believe one five is fear. Let me pull this. Let me do the fold out. Wait one moment, please. One five is anger. Oh, oh, I know why it's doing that. So there's an expanded tone scale. There's there's ones that show different increments and just above one one is, is fear, if I'm. No, just below one one is fear. One one, we've reached fear on the tone scale. So the person's afraid. And now I'm reading again. Guys, this guy's gonna read way too much of all this stuff. I'm not gonna make you watch all this stuff. So we're gonna jump ahead. But then suddenly addressed by danger, however, we have cowardice. So I have a great example of this. There was, there was a person <clears throat> who uh, I confronted about you know, basically the, the damaging things they were doing to me and my business. Not that, you know, I, I would not have like physically harmed them or anything like that. You gotta get this tone scale that I dropped. It's like the American flag, can't put it on the ground. Uh, anyways, it was a dangerous situation in that for the first time, that person knew that I knew what was really going on. And I made it perfectly clear to them that I knew exactly what was going on and that I would not have it. And that if it continued, there would be dire consequences from a legal perspective. So that led to cowardice. When I tell you <clears throat> that, if you've ever heard the expression, folded like a cheap lawn chair, that's what this person did in that meeting. They folded like a cheap lawn chair. They, they said yes. This was basically supposed to be a negotiation. And I just plowed over them with, you're gonna do this, and then you're gonna do this, and then you're gonna do this. Now, obviously, a one-one person will find a way to attack you. If you're confronting someone who is meaningfully harming your business to a degree or in a way that it would have legal ramifications, how in the world was this conversation supposed to be a negotiation? Didn't you get the impression he was talking to an employee, but now it sounds like it couldn't possibly have been an employee? This story doesn't make a lot of sense without you realizing it. So obviously they did that, right? Like afterwards, but I knew it was coming because I had the tone scale. So I was ready for it. And it came by getting us actually kicked out of our office space. I already had a place under lease ready to go. So we were fine. It was his landlord. <laughs> it was his landlord. Oh my goodness. I knew that I was like, okay, how can this person attack me through this? Okay, it's gonna happen. And it did. So this is a very useful tool. Um, then how did the person fold like a lawn chair if you ended up being kicked out of your office space and had to relocate? It's a very misunderstood tool. So I would encourage you to get the book, Science of Survival, if you're interested in this, you know, if you're not, you know, whatever. But this is a really, really helpful book. Uh, there are some people who would even go so far as to say that if you don't have the knowledge that's in this book, you could literally just be killed at any moment. I have actually heard someone say that it's that extreme to get this information. Uh, otherwise, you are at risk on a day-to-day -day basis because you don't know who's around you. You can't spot it. It's like Scientologists think that before L. Ron Hubbard put these magical words to page and gave his gift of wisdom to the human population, everybody was just like living like animals, barbarians in caves or something. Like if you don't read this book, you could be struck down at any minute by all the evil insidious people around you that you don't even know exist. This is, uh, it, just, it just goes to that very simplistic, basic level of thinking. Scientology, good, great. Everything else, bad, awful. Scientology is the lightness. Everything else is the darkness. Uh, I've spent enough time away from it that you almost forget that everybody thought that way. And it's, it's really tough to watch. Isn't an extreme statement to say that? Yeah, but I kind of agree with it. Like oh. if you're staying around people who are hostile to you but aren't showing it, it's a very, very dangerous thing to be around. So wouldn't recommend it, but I would recommend the book so you know how to spot it and stay away from it. You know, even if you're not a Scientologist, this is just a really, really good book for being able to evaluate people. And it comes with this chart of human evaluation. Could you imagine being a non-Scientologist and willingly reading 
a book, it's about this thick, by L. Ron Hubbard about the mind and behavior and predicting behavior. Nobody would assign, but a Scientologist would read this book. And even then, most Scientologists would not read this book unless they were actually forced to, which is the case. It is mandatory now to read this book. I spent almost my entire time in Scientology without reading this book until it became mandatory. And only then did I reluctantly read it. This is literally called the Hubbard chart of human evaluation and Dianetic processing. So it literally goes across the chart and shows you what you can expect from the person at a different tone level in different areas of life. So, and by the way, it's true 1000%. So uh, get this book if you're interested in understanding people better. So if you wanna do it, get the book, link in the description. Now that said, if you got some value out of this and you wanna to talk to me more about Scientology one-on-one, -on -one, message me on Instagram. I'm Tampa Brad there as well. And uh, please hit the subscribe button if you got some value to this. If you are a fellow group member, please hit the subscribe to let me know you're out there and you're watching and you're supporting me. Uh, there are also some non-group members supporting me. I love you. Thank you so much for what you're doing. Do you notice how he said there are also some non-group members that support me? Somehow Brad knows that the majority of his views come from Scientologists who are just watching his channel to support his channel. I think that's interesting. Um, there's some people making videos about me, which is awesome. Thank you so much for what you're doing. I really appreciate it. It's getting me uh, really well known in my group, which is a good thing because op opportunities, when people in a group see that you're down for the cause and you actually are with it and you can do some good for it and they find out about you and what you're doing, opportunities come out of the woodwork. So thank you for the people who are making videos about my videos really <laughs> it's helping me quite a bit actually like in ways you couldn't even imagine so thanks for that appreciate you watching i'll see you in the next bit peace here's how i interpret this when scientologists find out that he loves scientology so much that he does videos about them and then they find out that he's a builder and whatnot they want to use his services professionally to help show him support since he's showing scientology so much support I think Brad is literally talking about the positive networking effect, the benefit of Scientologists wanting to use his business because he's so pro-Scientology. There's a thing with Scientologists where they think other Scientologists are just very trustworthy. And this is how Scientologists end up getting so screwed in pyramid schemes, like the Reed Slatkin pyramid scheme you've probably never heard about, but it's a billion dollar Ponzi scheme that Scientologists lost hundreds of millions of dollars. There, there's another Ponzi scheme going on right now that I haven't had a chance to do a video about. Um, I'm called like CBP Capital. I'll put some screenshot here of what it really is. A local Clearwater Scientologist has lost over a billion dollars in another Ponzi scheme. And it's because Scientologists think that other Scientologists are just inherently trustworthy. So anyway, I've, uh, I, can, I can rest easy knowing that I've done my part to help uh, help Brad get some clout in Scientology, help him get some referral business. I mean, after all, if I know that doing videos about Brad helps Brad and I keep doing the videos, then I can't really be one one Brad, can I? Hey guys, did you notice that he said, if you wanna reach me, message me on Instagram. He had to turn off comments on his videos. Let's take a look at it again. What I'd love to know from you is in the comments, uh, or actually not on the comments because I had to turn those off because of trolls. <laughs> So here's the thing, Brad's purpose in doing these videos is to introduce people to Scientology and for him to be able to get credit for having introduced that person to Scientology. Brad's not doing these videos to help expand Scientology. Scientology already spends tens and hundreds of millions of dollars promoting itself in a hundred different ways, including their own frickin' direct TV channel, they have their own YouTube channel, they have websites, they don't need Tampa Brad and his 700 subscribers. By the way, 450 of them are, are, are because of me. Scientology doesn't need Brad to try and help Scientology expand. Brad's doing this so that he can, as a field staff member, someone who introduces someone to Scientology, he can get selectees and he can make those mad commissions by introducing people to Scientology. Well, if you're gonna do a YouTube channel for that reason, a big part of that is being able to interact with people in the comments. And he turned off the comments on all of his videos because people were leaving, you know, shitty comments about confidential Scientology stuff. And Brad's not allowed to see those comments. But again, this goes back to that small-minded, almost childlike thinking. What in the world is the difference?
between having people message you on Instagram and having them leave comments in the comment section. Nothing. And it's not like you can't block people in the comment section. You can. So it's not Brad who decided to turn his comments off. Scientology came in and cracked down on him. And it's not the first time they've cracked down on him on this YouTube channel. I did another video before about how they cracked down on him. I'll put a link to it up above. And I think the further evidence for this is that Brad has not uploaded to his channel in over three weeks. One of the questions you guys ask me a lot about Brad is, do I think Scientology asked him to do this? And my answer is no, I definitely don't think Scientology asked him to do this. And if Scientology wanted him to do these videos, you wouldn't see them cracking down because they would have already expected all this. Of course they would expect people to put shitty things in the comment section. They wouldn't have to come along and tell him to do something about that. He wouldn't be doing videos that he then had to delete because Scientology told him, hey, that's not okay, you can't do that. And I can almost promise you the video here where he recommends two uh, two books by author. These books would be considered offbeat, squirrely books in Scientology. I bet we're going to see him have to take this video down as well. And maybe the more Scientology cracks down on Brad, maybe that will help open his eyes a little bit to why am I a part of an organization that wants to control my behavior, control the information I'm allowed to be exposed to, control my emotions, and control my thoughts. Those four items come from several books that Steve Hassan has written on the subject of cults and cult mind control, uh, how to recognize it, uh, and what to do about it. So I'll tell you, one of Steve Hassan's books, Combating Cult Mind Control, was a real game changer for me when I read it a couple years ago. So anyway, I'll stop picking on Brad for right now and I'll save more picking for another day. Thank you everyone for watching. Thanks to all of you who watch until the very end and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Okay, if you wanna see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you wanna see a, a different one of my videos, uh, oh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe right